So, welcome back. We have been looking at this family of description logics and we have seen how to define new concepts from old if you want to see that or new roles from old. So, you start off with a set of primitive concepts and a set of primitive roles and then you can define new complex or compound concepts or roles essentially. Let us now look at what are the kind of statements that we can make. So, we will start with the T box. There are essentially four statements that we can make. Uh, we can say that a concept C is subsumed by another concept D, which defines a concept hierarchy or a taxonomy. So, we have been talking about the, the natural world taxonomy quite often. So, a goat is a mammal, a mammal is an animal, an animal, animal is a living creature and so on. So, each of them is a concept essentially and they are sub concepts of other concepts. We can talk about concept equivalence, these are like synonyms. We can talk about primitive concepts which have this subsumption relationship with complex or defined concepts. So, remember A are named concepts or primitive concepts and uh, C and D are something which can be constructed from simpler these things. So, the most important one is C is a subclass of D or as we have said here, D subsumes C essentially. In terms of interpretation, it basically means that the set which represents the concept C is a subset of the concept which represents D essentially. There are various ways that we have been able to talk about such kind of relationships. Uh, in description logic, uh, we are essentially saying that C is a subconcept of D essentially. It is a subset essentially. That the set C is in, inside the set D. In first order logic, we would have said for all x, Cx implies dx. It's the same thing in first order logic, but here in description logics, as we have seen, we are not talking about uh, variables and quantifiers and things like that. We are simply naming concepts and relations between concepts. So this subsumption relation is the is the the key relation, in fact. C is equivalent to D. It is basically saying that C is subsumed by D and D is subsumed by C essentially, that they are the same concepts with different names essentially. We can define a primitive concept and give it a name and say it, it is a subset of this concept C essentially. As we will see, we can use it to define uh, this thing, but we cannot use it in reasoning very easily. The only difference between this and when we said that uh, C is subsumed by D is that C and D could be arbitrary things, whereas here we are saying that, okay, I am defining this class and this is a subclass of that some class essentially, but we have not said precisely what kind of subclass it is, uh, but it is a subclass, that is all we know. If we say equivalent, then of course, we are giving a name to a concept that we have defined. We, can, we could have defined C using whatever ex com complex expression and then we are saying we will call this a new concept. So, for example, aunt essentially. Let us talk about role axioms or what goes into the R box. There are three things here that R1 is subsumed by R2, R1 is equivalent to R2 or a role chain is subsumed by some complex by some role R essentially. 
So, as we said, this simply says that R1 is subsumed by R2 or R2 subsumes R1. So, R2 could, for, for example, be uh, the let us say sibling relation and, and R1 could be the brother relation essentially. So, if uh, let us say we have this set of people and this arrow points to the fact that there is a brother relation between them. So, A has two brothers, let us call this A and B has one brother. So, that is a relation essentially. Whereas, if A had a sister as well and let us say B also had a sister as well, then this new relation which is the union of the full arrows and the dashed arrows subsumes the brother. So, basically sibling relation which says that either this kind of arrow or this kind of arrow, then that obviously is a superset of the brother relation essentially. So, I hope the idea is, is clear essentially. Formally, we would say that if A B belongs to R 1, then A B also belongs to R 2. So, if A is a brother of C B or B is a brother of A, then B is a sibling of A. The equivalence thing is, is basically a two way thing. So, basically it is another synonym for the same relation name. If A B belongs to R 1, then it is equivalent to saying that A B belongs to R 2. We can say that a role chain is a sub role of R which is here essentially. So, R could be another relation that we have defined essentially. So, finally, assertions which is to talk about the A box which talks about individuals essentially. So, we can assert that A belongs to the class C. That A is a C for example or object A is a member of the concept C. If that is not true, once we assert that if it is not true that it induces new role fillers essentially. So, if we say for example, A is an aunt and in our knowledge base that is not, it is not clear that A is an aunt. So, essentially this will induce the fact say that A belongs to the set who have siblings. A for example, A a, a is a A belongs to the set who are female and who have siblings who have children or who have at least one child. Then if we simply assert that A is an aunt, then this will automatically be added to that essentially. Likewise, we can assert that there is a relation between A and B that A is the aunt of B for example. If it is not already clear from the database, from the knowledge base, then we would add those uh, appropriate relations and restrictions. So, as you said, if not, the assertion induces the role filler and induces the new assertions about the existing role fillers, so that this A B satisfies this relation R. Object equality, we can say that two individuals are the same or they are different. 
remember that we do not have the un unique name assumption in description logic. So, it is possible that uh, that two symbols can stand for the same individual, it is uh, but we can we can state that they stand for the same individual, we can also state that they do not stand for the same individual. So, A is not the same as B essentially. Okay, so we are done with uh, the knowledge base. Uh, next, uh, we will look at uh, some languages, which are some of the languages that we mentioned, which and we will see what they allow us to see. Essentially. So, we will do that in the next session.